Welcome to the Backyard Bounty Podcast from HeritageAcresMarket.com, where we talk about all things backyard poultry, beekeeping, gardening, sustainable living, and more. And now, here's your host, Nicole. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Backyard Bounty. Today, I'm talking with Audra, and she's going to tell us everything that we need to know about starting a rabbit tree and raising rabbits for meat and for show. So this intro is going to be a little bit different. Uh, We recorded this episode and had some technical issues, so... um, One of the things that happened is we lost the complete intro uh, of this episode. And then also, as you listen to this episode, you'll notice that there are some issues where some soundtracks kind of get a little choppy or maybe um, kind of get fuzzy and and you're not completely able to hear everything or it kind of speeds up and slows down a little bit. I really apologize for this, guys, um, but this was a really great episode and uh, I didn't want to inconvenience Audrey with re-recording and these These little nuances happen. There's only maybe 10 of them total in this almost hour long episode. But without further ado, I hope that you guys enjoy this episode and you're excited to learn about rabbits like I was. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so tell us some more about your homestead and what you have going on there. Yeah, so right now we have dairy goats and rabbits, chickens, pigs, just the whole it's just everything. (laughs) Awesome. Um, Yes. And I am in charge of all of our rabbits, our whole rabbit tree. So that's uh, my biggest passion. I love keeping care of them and learning about them and stuff. (laughs) So what do you raise rabbits for? What's kind of your focus? So about 10 years ago, I was um, gifted by my parents, a adorable little pet rabbit. (laughs) And that just started everything. <laughs> I got into 4-H and I started raising meat rabbits um, and showing those. So now, fast forward 10 years later, I still show rabbits occasionally, not as much, but I still raise them. And then I also raise them for um, meat for our homestead and then occasionally pets. Awesome. So rabbits, it's um, something I don't know a ton about. Um when I was younger, I used to volunteer at the Raptor Center, which is a rehabilitation mm-hmm. facility for injured birds of prey. And we would get in, um, there was a gal that was a breeder and ones that kind of didn't make the cut she would donate to us to use for our birds. But that's kind of the only thing that I know about rabbits. So yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know a lot. What, uh, what kind do you raise? We raise um, three breeds right now, Californian rabbits, giant chinchillas, and then rexes. And I've bred a couple of different breeds, like Angora breeds and stuff, but that's what we're doing right now. Um, and all three of those breeds are meat breeds. The giant chinchillas, not so much, but the other two are meat breeds. So we do process those occasionally. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So why those three? What was um, What makes those ones special that you chose to raise those ones um well down in texas is where i started raising rabbits and down there everybody for some reason just really likes breeding meat rabbits (laughs) there's no other kind of breeds for some reason down there so i just that's just what what i started with and then coming up here to colorado and showing this like all 50 breeds are all over colorado so i got to see which ones i like the most and um, i started off with californians So I'm just partial to them. (laughs) I've been raising them since the beginning, so I still love raising them. And then Rex breeds because I, raising Californians, they only come in one color. So I was getting bored (laughs) of just the one color. And I still, I love the big, large meat breeds. So um, I raise them because they have a lot of color and their fur is really cool. It's like a a velvety kind of feel. Mm -hmm. And then I just started raising giant chinchillas because I just wanted to try something different because I haven't switched out a breed in a long time. And they're a lot of fun. They are humongous. (laughs) They can reach like, well, they're very big, like around 15 pounds. So yeah, it's just a fun adventure (laughs) trying them. (laughs) But yeah. (laughs) So when you're raising rabbits for meat, or or I guess just in general, probably, what's, um, so what's kind of the basic, if I wanted to start raising rabbits, what 
like housing and feed? Like what's kind of the rabbitry 101? Yeah. So if you want to raise rabbits for meat, um, there are a lot of breeds <laughs> and they would be called, um, the breeds would be a uh, commercial breed. Those are the ones that are going to, in the end, give you more meat than what you would see at a pet store. Those are like fancy breeds. Um, some of the most popular breeds would be uh, New Zealand's, Californians, Silver Fox, Satins, Rexes, Palominos, those kind of breeds is what you would want to be looking for. Um, the first thing that probably would come to your mind is like, oh, I'm just going to go on Craigslist and just get some just random meat sure. rabbits, just like free ones or whatever. Do not do that. <laughs> you will end up bringing a problem home with you usually. It's nice mm -hmm. to go out, it, or it would be a lot better if you go out, do some research on what exactly you want, and then try to find a breeder. And if you could actually get pedigreed rabbits, that would be the best, because that person who's been breeding those rabbits is breeding them to the highest quality, the highest standard that they can. So in the end, when you are raising those baby rabbits and you're ready to process them, they um, are just genetically better at creating meat because they were bred that way versus if you just sure. go out and get a mixed rabbit, not sure where it came from. Most people aren't breeding for the highest quality. So I, you don't need to go get a blue ribbon rib, uh, winning rabbit, but at least from a breeder, reputable breeder, I would highly recommend that. Um, so after you picked out your breed, I would then um, try to figure out what kind of setup you would want like what you know if it's a small backyard you probably want to do cages um a lot of people don't like raising rabbits on cages because they think it's inhumane but i've i've been doing that since the beginning and they're fine it's okay to uh, raise them on cages the other option would probably be colony raising them which is where you just bit, like create a big pen and all the rabbits run around with each other um, I mean, the benefit of that is they could do the, you know, rabbit things, dig holes and stuff, but you have no control in who's breeding with who, and they could fight because rabbits are very territorial. So yeah, it's, it's preference, really. I prefer the cages because I have a lot of control in what goes on. Um, so yeah, I, cages are better, I think. I, my size cages are 24 inches by 36, and I think that's a good size for large breeds. Um, for smaller breeds, it could be smaller cages, but I think 24 by 36 is a good size cage. And when you have them in there, do you have, um, like I said, I don't know anything about this, but do you have more than one or like what's your ratio to male and female or do you use one male and kind of move them from cage to cage? So starting off with meat rabbits, I would recommend getting a trio. So that would be one male and two females. Um, that will make a lot of babies <laughs> eventually you think oh that's not very many it will it'll make a lot of bunnies <laughs> and then i would not have if you're doing the cage setup and not a colony setup i would give a cage uh for each rabbit because females are very territorial and they'll just end up fighting usually um and then if you put the boy with the females you'll get babies and you won't know when they're coming and stuff like that and they don't need companions people think oh you know he's so sad he's lonely they really aren't <laughs> they're happy being by themselves so they don't need companions or anything like that um but yeah <laughs> and then so what about like a little hut thing you know for them to raise their babies and do you put anything like that in there yeah, so once you've um, bred the rabbits, uh, you should keep records so you know when she's going to kindle or give birth. They Their gestation is about 31 days, um, so calculate from when you bred her to when she's going to give birth, and about three days before that date, you would put in a nest box, um, and you can look up pictures online of what nest boxes look like. They're usually a foot or two long. They're just boxes you put in there and you put in some hay and then when she's ready to have her baby she'll hop in there hopefully <laughs> that's what you want and she'll pull some fur underneath her belly and will make a nest and then hopefully have her babies in there if she's a good mom <laughs> and how many babies do they usually have per litter um they can have from one to 15 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, the 15 and up is usually more rare, but on average, they'll have around eight babies is kind of what you are hoping for. So yeah, they can have a lot. (laughs) And then how long does it take for them to wean and then she can be bred again? Uh, Some people wean them at six weeks old. I think that's a little early, so I wait till seven or eight. Um, Because then the babies usually have less health issues later on. That's just my experience. And then some people will give her uh, a week and then rebreed her. But I like a month. It might not be totally economical, but I just, I don't know. I feel like breeding her so soon after their condition goes down. They can't keep their condition while they're pregnant. So I wait a month and then I rebreed her again if I want to. And I think that keeps their condition up and they can have more babies for a longer amount of time. So yeah, one one female can give you a lot of babies in a year, like you mentioned earlier. I think if you breed them um, on my schedule that I usually keep, I think you can get around 40 or 50 babies with just a trio a year. Wow. And that's casually breeding, not, you know, hardcore every six weeks breeding her. So yeah, lots of babies. <laughs> so really when it comes to raising them for meat, you don't need a large area like you would, you know, cattle or anything like that. And you can get a fair amount of meat out of mm-hmm. one, you know, kind of a smaller footprint compared to a lot of other animals. Their uh, feed to meat conversion is phenomenal. I think it's better than any of the rabbits or better than any of the animals we've raised. Um, I think you only put in three, if I remember right, three pounds of feed for one pound of rabbit meat. Anyway, so I think so. But yeah, it's really cool. And yeah, they don't need a lot of space like goats or cows would need. It's like the perfect small animal for backyard um, homesteaders who want to be in control of their own meat. Sure. I, I've seen a lot about uh, online with people that raise rabbits and stuff, but it's not something that um, that I've gone down. And now that you kind of explain it, I totally see why that would be advantageous uh, for a meat source. So when you when you process the rabbits, do you usually like process them as as needed, or do you kind of batch process them and then freeze them? What's your what's the technique for that? So when we breed our rabbits, usually the intent is to sell them because these are showing rabbits. Um, but when we have our leftover rabbits or rabbits that need to be culled because of maybe a disqualification for showing or something like that, we will process them around, we like 16 weeks. Usually 12 weeks is when um, is the most economical because after that, they eat more than what they're worth. <laughs> but we like 16 weeks just because out of convenience because um, they're, they're just larger and it's easier to splice the meat up once it's all processed. Um, and cook. So we do 16 weeks. And then do you usually freeze them? Um, we do. We let them, so after we're in processing, we put them in the refrigerator for a chill and yeah, we freeze them um, whole for stews and things like that. Or before we freeze them, we dice up all the meat up and then you can grill or do whatever you want with that kind of meat. So that kind of was going to be my next question. What, um, how, how do you cook rabbit is it is it pretty versatile or um there are there's hardly any rabbit recipes out there so when we first started all we had was just stews non-stop and we're like okay <laughs> rabbit stew is pretty boring what can we do so we did a lot of research and found out that um you can actually cook rabbit the exact same way as chicken as long as you just lower the temperature a little bit like in an oven or in the grill or however you usually cook chicken um, and it cooks exactly the same. Uh, you just need to learn how to debone everything. That's what we learned. <laughs> mm-hmm. It could be a little tough at first, but once you watch enough YouTube videos, it's pretty easy. So we like to debone most of the rabbits that we get, and then we freeze it, and then, you know, on thigh and grill it, and cook it just like chicken, pretty much. You mostly raise them for show, I guess, as, as the first uh yes. priority and then meat is a secondary yes mm-hmm. okay so when you show your rabbits do you pretty much just show them in Colorado yeah I don't really try tra- traveling out of Colorado because it's just eh, tiring <laughs> but yes yeah, so sure. all around the front range um Colorado Springs to Denver is where we usually show 
because I am no longer in 4-H, I do a lot of American Rabbit Breeder Association sanctioned shows. Um, oh, and those are great. They're a lot of fun. It's fun to see all the kids and stuff <laughs> showing their rabbits and then competing against adults. It's just a lot of fun. You can make a lot of rabbit friends and see all the different breeds because there's so many different breeds at these shows. Because these shows are actually pretty big. When I first started, I was just surprised by how many people actually do show rabbits. Nobody talks about it. <laughs> it's really cool, though. <laughs> how fun. And do you, do you normally do well in your shows? moderate <laughs> yeah good enough to keep going <laughs> yeah i think if you're for rabbit shows or probably like a lot of um, any kind of livestock shows you need to have a lot of that certain animal that you're wanting to show and so i'm a little bit more smaller scale than a lot of the other competitors um so i only have at most 20 adult rabbits at a time and sometimes you even need more like a more of a gene pool to create something that would be an absolute show winner. But um, I haven't done bad <laughs> in all my years of showing, so yeah. <laughs> awesome. So when you um, are raising the rabbits, is there a different type of feed that you that you give them since they are show rabbits, or what kind of feed requirements do they do they have? Yes, yeah, so for farmy rabbits and for showing rabbits, um, a good diet is very necessary. I feed a blended diet of commercial feed, vegetables, and hay. Um, for showing, it's a little different. It's more commercial feed, but for meat rabbits, they do need some commercial feed. They cannot live on, uh, only off of vegetables from the garden and hay as much as we all wish they could. <laughs> they, um, they need a lot of the minerals and stuff inside of the commercial feed. Otherwise, you'd have to supplement that, and that's just extra cost. You don't have to pay if you just feed them a little bit of commercial feed. Um, I feed for my meat rabbits, the adults, one to two cups a day, female or male. Um, and then they get hay every once in a while. And then as much veggies as we can give them out of the, um, out of the garden, out of the kitchen. But when we introduce new vegetables and green matter to the rabbits, you have to be very careful because rabbits are very fragile. I've had a couple in our beginning years, we had a rabbit or two die because they were fed way too many veggies that they had never had before, and then they bloat. So you just have to be very careful with that. Just gradually put that, uh, a certain vegetable or green into their diet, and then you probably feed them as much as you want. And then they, um, and then they would need hay every once in a while. It's not crucial, but they do need hay just to get everything moving through their system. And what about, do you give them like, um, and I don't even know if this is a thing with rabbits, but like, like a mineral yeah. block or a lot anything of people, like if that? If you go to the pet store, people, uh, employees will probably tell you, oh, they need this little, uh, for rabbits, they have this little salt or mineral spool that you could give them, but they don't actually need that. It, all the minerals that they need are going to be in their feed. And most of the time, those salt and mineral little spools will actually like rust your cages if you go the cage route so they're not very helpful whatsoever um so they don't rabbits don't need any kind of supplements usually unless there's you know if you get a sick rabbit but healthy rabbit doesn't need any kind of supplements at all and then um I know some people if you're thinking oh I'm going to be raising these for meat I you know it depends on you know if you if you're going to be raising them for me, you want an organic feed. And usually organic feeds are super, super expensive. <laughs> They're like a specialty kind of feed. Um, but I feel totally fine. You just read your ingredients. Just make sure there's nothing crazy in there. But I feel fine with just getting feed from the local feed store um, and then supplementing with vegetables and stuff. And the meat tastes great. There's nothing wrong with that at all, I personally think. And then when you're looking for your feed, you also want high protein uh, for your meat rabbits and showing rabbits. Um, the protein should probably be within 18 to 16% range, but 18 is a lot better. They'll grow faster and it helps nursing mama rabbits and all that kind of stuff. So definitely look for that when you're trying to pick out a feed. Is is um, rabbit feed usually pretty easily available at the feed store? Or is it something that you have to have them order generally? Like at least in your area 
Um, yeah. Yeah, our local feast stores have a good uh, selection. So I don't usually have a problem. I don't think anyone should have a problem looking for feed, uh, rabbit feed in stores. They come in like 50 pound bags. So if you just have 30 rabbits, it'll last you a while. <laughs> And now I remember reading something online. I don't know if this was just one of those like internet myth things or whatever, but it said that you really shouldn't feed carrots to rabbits. Is that, is that true? I think that is just going off the, just be careful what, how much you feed them. So I think when people think of rabbits like in carrots, they think, oh, they just want an unlimited supply of carrots. And yes, that would be harmful if you ended up giving carrots a bunch of carrots to a rabbit who's never had them before that can be dangerous because then they could bloat but that would be with any vegetable so i think that would be a, a myth and a truth <laughs> at the same time so if you want to give your rabbits carrots just a little bit at a time and then eventually you can give them a lot of carrots and they will be totally fine okay i guess that makes sense yeah. everything in in moderation exactly. <laughs> even your veggies yes. <laughs> So once your rabbits are ready to process, what, um, like what's the, what's the process of processing them? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> a lot of people, it's funny. A lot of people hear like, oh, I'm going to go process my rabbits. And they're just mortified. Like, how could you process a cute little bunny? That's so, that sounds horrible. And yeah, in the beginning, it sounds a little rough, but um, the product that you end up with is fabulous and you'll think oh yeah I'll process rabbits all day long but um there's a lot of different ways to dispatch the rabbits and we tried just about every single way <laughs> with um success and failure so a couple ways you could uh I hear a lot of people is the um they will take like a sledgehammer pretty much <laughs> and whack the back of the rabbit's head and it knocks them out and then you start your process we did not like that, and um, mm -hmm. you can shoot them, and that didn't work very well. So we do a method, a ring, a ringing method. So you essentially just ring their neck, and what happens is that you break their mm -hmm. spinal cord, and they die immediately. And so it's quick, and we have never had a like we've never had um, any problems with that. They all all died immediately. It's great. You can buy a like this little um, metal ringer that you can hook up or uh, screw into the wall, and that's what we do. Is we just take a broomstick and lie it on the ground and put the rabbit onto the ground as well, and put the broomstick over their neck and then step onto the broomstick and then uh, pull very hard on their legs and then they're wrapped. So that work has worked super well. And then we will um, hang them up by their back feet, like on a tree branch, and then start. The processing is super easy. It's very, very quick. Once you get the hang of it, you can get a rabbit done in like 10 or 15 minutes. It's one of the easiest, I think, animals to do. If you want to learn how to process animals, I think rabbits are the easiest. And do you use um, like their pelts or anything? I, I do. They're not valuable at all on the market these days. But if you want to make hats for yourself or gloves, yeah. Um, I'm still learning how to um, tan and process, um, but it is a lot of fun when you do come out with a beautiful pelt. And that's another reason why you should look at uh, the breeds that you're getting because you know a lot of um, there's a lot of different colors, and that's one of the reasons also why I started raising Rexes because I just loved all the colors that you could get through your pelts. So when you raise the rabbits, um, what's what's some kind of your advice on that? Yes, yeah, so. The day after they're born, um, you want to go into the nest and look and see if there are any dead ones because you don't want that because you'll end up getting flies. So you want to go in and check and make sure all the babies are okay, how many are there, take out any dead ones. Um, it is okay to touch them. A lot of people think, oh, if I touch the babies, then the mom's not going to want to you know, feed them. That's usually untrue. As long as you don't have any strong scent on your hands, just wash your hands before. Um, you can go in there and clean it all out. And then you pretty much leave them alone until a week or two old, um, two weeks old. And then you'll see them hopping around and they're really cute. <laughs> um, 
And then at about six weeks old, well, about two or three weeks old, you can take the nest box out. And then at about six to eight, eight weeks old, you can take mom out. They're weaned by that time. Um, you can either divide them up right then from females to males, or you can wait at the latest three months. If you want to, let's say, you just want to keep those rabbits, you need to separate them at at least three months because um, they could become sexually active. And that will not be good. <laughs> You'll get a bunch of young bred rabbits and that won't be good. So separate them. And then a lot of people will process them at around 10 or 12 weeks. That's the most economically perfect time to do it because anytime after that, they'll start eating more than what they're worth. Um, we process them around 16 weeks just because we like a larger sized rabbit for cooking and stuff. Um, and then also while you're raising the rabbits, keep records of everything when they when, when they were born, um, how many were in the litter, If keep some notes. If the mom did something weird, you can remember that for the next time you breed her. Um, I tattoo my rabbits. A lot of the, uh, mainly because a lot of them look the same. <laughs> and I don't know who's who if I don't tattoo them. So I tattoo them. You don't have to do that, but I just do that to help with my records as well. So when when they're time when it's time to wean them, is it is it easy to tell at that age which ones are the males and females? <laughs> when they're that young, it is actually really hard. Unless you know what you're looking for already, it's very hard to tell the gender of baby rabbits um you, you should probably have some try to find somebody either watch a bunch of youtube videos videos on it or try to find somebody who does know how to do that and have them teach you because um to do it with a visual is the only way i think to go it's hard to read in a book mm -hmm. or listen to me talk about it and be like and then try to hold a rabbit and try to figure it out. Sure. So try to find somebody who can, who can teach you. Once the rabbits are um, adults, which is between six, eight months old, then you can tell. It'll be very easy to tell who's a boy yeah. <laughs> and who's a female. But when they're that small, it actually is pretty hard. So watch tons of YouTube videos. Try to talk to as many people as you can. Sure. And I know that you guys have a YouTube channel. Do you have any videos like that on there? Not yet. Um, we are just starting the process of our YouTube channel. Okay. So there's, I don't even think there's any videos on there yet. I'm, I don't remember. But maybe one day. That'd be a, a good video. Yeah. <laughs> so do, is there any, like, kind of common health or behavioral issues or other, you know, maybe, like, housing issues that, that you've run into with with the rabbits? Like you said, when the, sometimes they might do something weird or whatever when they have their babies, like what what maybe can happen? Yeah, rabbits can be crazy sometimes <laughs> and unruly. So I guess for um, your question, uh, when rabbits can be quote unquote weird when they're having their babies in their nest box, sometimes they just don't do what they should do. Um, a lot of times, first time mom rabbits they have no idea what's going on. And so they're like, oh my goodness, these things are just coming out of me. And a lot of times they don't even have their babies in the nest box when they should. Mm. Um, so that would be a weird thing. <laughs> um, sometimes rabbits don't breed as much as we think. Or, you know, the phrase, oh, rabbits breed like rabbits. It's actually a little hard sometimes to breed rabbits. Sometimes they just don't want to. Or in the wintertime, it's very hard to um, breed rabbits because that just... Um, that natural clock in their system thinks, oh, it's winter. I don't, I don't want to have babies. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes rabbits just they just don't want to play by the rules. <laughs> sure. Well, I guess just like any other animal, they're gonna, they're not always gonna be compliant to what we might want them to do. So I know that um, you said that you repurpose um, the rabbit waste for your garden what how do you do that what's your what's your technique with that yeah so rabbit fertilizer or manure is super cool you don't have to compost it which is fabulous you can actually put it 
straight as long as it, after it's dried out you can put it straight onto plants um and it won't burn anything unlike you know chicken and horse that has to compost over a long time you can just throw it straight into wherever you need it and then you're done i like to do um i like to take like a gallon bucket and fill it up with water and then pour a bunch of rabbit pellets in there and then let it sit for a while because then it will um, break down a little bit easier and i can spread it so there's not just rabbit pellets just all over the place um but it, yeah it's great for gardens um it's also great if you want to sell it we sell it um in 50 pound bags and that's a great way to make a little side money for your rabbit tree as well and do you use it on your uh on everything like vegetables and and all mm -hmm. that as yeah well? we use it on everything vegetables trees flowers just everything so would you say that you've had like any mistakes that that you've made when raising rabbits that you know have kind of had some good lessons come out of it Yes, plenty. <laughs> I can name a, yeah, I can name a lot, but I'll talk about a few. <laughs> um, let's see. One, oh yeah. So when you're buying rabbits, it's really, really good to health check them. Always health check your rabbits before you buy them. Um, it's very important. It's very hard to tell if a rabbit is um sick or has an illness. They don't show it very well at all. So if you do see something wrong with the rabbit, I mean, something big is probably wrong. So this one time I uh, was buying a meat rabbit from somebody and I just got her. I didn't really care at the time. She was pedigreed. So I thought, oh, you know, they're probably keeping care of her. And then I brought her home and I bred her to one of my rabbits. And then all the babies came out to have um, syphilis. So that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to then treat my entire rabbit tree with penicillin and giving rabbits shots are not that fun. If I had just checked her and made sure everything was good um, with her, I could have avoided a huge, huge problem. <laughs> um, I fixed the problem, but it took a lot of money and it took a lot of my time. I didn't have to spend if I had just health checked her. So health checking is very important. Um, some of the key points you want to, when you're checking your, uh, a rabbit that you want to buy is check their eyes, make sure there's no gunk in their eyes, um, check that, check their teeth. Most people don't think about checking their teeth, but if rabbit's teeth are compromised, their whole health goes out the window. So check their teeth and make sure they have all of them. Um, make sure they don't have any broken bones. Make sure that when you, or when they're breathing, kind of listen. And if there's any kind of raspiness. Um, don't get that rabbit. <laughs> so there's just some like key points to just look for when you're buying a rabbit. Also look at the condition where it's living. If it's living in a rough place, it might, you know, there's a possibility you could have mites, it could have ear mites. So those are things into consideration when you're buying rabbits. Is there like um a a better age to buy them at? Like I don't know how long their like their breeding life is. So mm -hmm. Is there like a maximum, like you don't want to buy a rabbit if it's over a year or two old or something like that? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I would agree. Probably not more than a year, probably not more than a year old. If you could find a trio of rabbits and the females have already been proven or have had babies before, that's, I think, the perfect setup because then you could immediately start breeding them um, and you probably won't have too many problems because the moms are already experienced. But buying babies is totally fine, too. Um, any more than two years old starts, um, that's near the end of a, <laughs> um, if you buy them any older than two years old, you're missing out on a lot of, um, litters and stuff. So don't, I probably wouldn't buy them any older than two years old. Sure. Um, what about, you mentioned that there's maybe a, couple of mistakes that you made along the way was there any others that maybe you'd like to share <laughs> yeah I don't want to like rehash your um, past mistakes or anything but <laughs> no, no mistakes are good you learn from them so no mistakes can be good um <laughs> let's see let me think for just a second about another good one <laughs> um Oh, okay. I got one. <laughs> Always keep your cages locked because uh -oh. rabbits will find way to each other. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, they want to have babies. <laughs> sure. So, yeah, I have, 
a time or two where I've accidentally left the latches unlocked, or if I had an undrain cages, which is um, a form of cage where there'll be three slots, three slots and rabbits are right next to each other, and, and but I'll leave the lid maybe unlocked, and so they can hop in <laughs> to his neighbor's um, little area. So yeah, I've had a time accidentally left that surprise litter there, and it was don't end well because you know I wasn't expecting litters, so you know they're born on wire cages, so you kind of don't survive. Um, so I make sure you watch cages <laughs> all the time because they'll, they'll find a way. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, let's see if I can think of one more. Mm. Oh, it really, okay, so this one, it really wasn't a mistake of mine, but, um, if you're looking at breeds to buy, and you see the, you see the breeds that, anything with the word giant in front of a name, you probably don't get those kind of rabbits for just a backyard project, because they are huge, and, um, <laughs> if you have little kids, and they're playing around with the rabbits. The rabbits can really give a good kick. <laughs> I've had, yeah, I've had um, little kids come over and they're like, oh, I want to hold the rabbits. And I'm hesitant to do that just because even if it's the friendliest rabbits, they want to feel very secure when you're holding them. And so I get nervous when little kids hold rabbits because, you know, those back legs can pack a punch right in the face sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, so I had to learn how to hold rabbits properly because um, I've gotten kicked in the face a couple times, too. So learn how to how to hold them properly so they feel secure. <laughs> so when at the Raptor Center, when we would get some of the rabbits in, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And I got scratched many times down the forearm. And oh my gosh, their little claws are so sharp. So what is the proper way to hold a rabbit to reduce scars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, one thing, you definitely wear, like, long sleeve shirts. That'll help. Um, it'd probably be easier to look up a YouTube video on it mm -hmm. to know exactly what I'm talking about. But how I um, how I hold them is I'll grab them by their scruff, and I will pick them up with my right hand, and then I will tuck them under my left hand, almost like I'm holding a football. And then my left hand kind of goes underneath, underneath their back feet because they want to feel supported. Um, if they don't feel anything underneath their feet, they're going to feel like they're falling, even though you're holding them tight. And then that's when you get all the scratches and, and you know, their head's tucked kind of underneath your arms so they can't see. And that is the easiest way to hold the rabbits without them squirming and kicking you. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And I yeah. imagine yours are probably, um, you don't worry about getting nipped too much. I know that we had issues mm -hmm. with, the, I, I've been bit a few times too. That's not fun. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, we we also like to um, breed our rabbits with a friendly temperament. So we've had a couple just evil, evil rabbits <laughs> in the past. And we don't tolerate that too much because we're having to handle them all the time, especially if they're show rabbits. We're having to get them out of the cage. The judges are having to hold them. So, yeah, if you notice that if you're buying rabbits and they look or they're, you know, biting the cages and running after people, um, yeah. I would avoid that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have any advice for somebody that wants to get into raising rabbits, either for show or for yes. meat? Yes. So, um, kind of like what we talked um, about already, be very careful when you're buying the rabbits. Give them a health check over. Research the rabbit breeds that you want um, because there's so many out there. Make sure if you're going for meat, make sure they are a commercial breed. Those breeds are going to have um, the highest amount of meat on their bodies. And avoid giant breeds because a lot of the giant breeds are big boned and you want the small bone because the meat will fill the space that the bone isn't. For showing, if you want to get into showing, go on the American Breeders Rabbit, or if you wanting to show go on arba american rabbit breeders association website they have a lot of information on showing and shows that are local to you and it, and they also talk about all the different kinds of breeds so you can look through all those because there's way more than just the commercial meat breeds out there a lot of fancy ones um if you want to go 4-h is also a really great way to get kids into rabbits you can learn a lot. That's where I learned a lot of my information, too, was um, from my 4-H rabbit project leaders. They're great. So I think rabbits for 4-H project are awesome. I feel like 
before I started talking to you, you know, if I wanted to get rabbits tomorrow, I would have no idea what to do. But I feel like now after talking to you, I am at least armed with enough knowledge that I could make some educated decisions and not totally just wing it. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. bad. <laughs> so for those that uh, want to find more about you and your rabbits in your homestead, where can they find you? We're most active on our Instagram at Nomadic Chicks Homestead. We do also have a website at nomadicchickshomestead.com. And we're just starting up our YouTube, but not much is going on there just yet. But we're hoping to do something fun with that in the future. Awesome. And we'll put links to everything in the description so people can find you easily and they don't have to go searching the internet for you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, Audra, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about rabbits and tell us everything that we needed to know. I think it's really interesting what you have going on, and I and I totally understand rabbits a lot better than when we started talking. So thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for listening to Backyard Bounty, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you for listening to Backyard Bounty, a podcast by HeritageAcresMarket.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the show, please email us at ask at HeritageAcresMarket.com. Also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Heritage Acres Market. All the links mentioned in this podcast will be included in the description. See you again next week.